So welcome all of you, Nana here. And then we are into the next day's session on manufacturing. So in today's session, uh, we are going to see uh, the push operation pull, assembly pull for serial lot revision and then the locator control to transactions using picking loads. So it is a very interesting one and then it will be teaching all the basics of uh, manufacturing actually. So let me go inside and then start to share my screen. So this demonstration is going to teach you the basic push, operation pull, and assembly pull for serial lot revision and locator controls, and then the picking rules also will be explained. Actually. So uh, I have to have. I'm now working on my company's instance actually. So we have to have these roles also: fine IT security manager, employee, inventory manager, warehouse manager, shipping manager. So all these things are there. And then for inventory manager up to manufacturing engineer, you need to have a data access. And then from product data server, data access is not required. Actually. Uh, this was re very recently introduced, maybe one year back or something like that, <clears throat> for even creating the item actually. Now, in the present system, they say that product data steward is no more required for item creation, but it is required only for structure creation actually. So the concepts keep on changing. And then uh, please follow with the latest version of the Oracle actually, and then see what, what exactly you need. So I'll now go there. I will now open up mine now. <clears throat> So let me sign in. I know I'm going into my company's instance actually. So I go on there. So I have already assigned on the what's called all the roles have been assigned to him, and then the data access is also provided. So you have to provide the data access for the particular inventory org now. So once when you provide these uh, what's called the roles, it is uh, preferable uh, as you run this one, the import user and role. Uh, the system has got an inbuilt syncing mechanism, and then uh, it will now sync it up, but uh, uh, you can even force sync it by this concurrent actually, by this ESS job we can do it now. And then always uh, run at least once in a week or something like that, the retrieval well depth. So this is now going to bring in all the setup data into the transaction systems. It will now make the setup data visible on the transaction systems. But again, Oracle says it is not required. <clears throat> but even then for a better uh, thing, what happens, you make a force, uh, uh, what's called syncing of everything, of all your setups and those uh, that works. I'm not going to use this R, A011 R. And then uh, this is a, a manufacturing org. I'll just show you, first of all, I will now go there, click on it. <clears throat> so let me have what's called this org, which I'm going to use now. It's already configured actually. So manage inventory. So you go there, go to the manage inventory org. They'll be calling me org, and then show it here. Zero one one. <clears throat> Search now. So select it and then click on edit. So it is now tied to my own credentials, actually, my own location, and then my business unit, my legal lady, everything starting on easy one. So click on next one. And then you can now see this is a manufacturing plant. So organization is a manufacturing plant. So you know that. And then I have given a start revision number as A1. And then uh, here I have made a locator control determined at submit level. And remember, if you forget it and then made as a no control, we cannot make a change once when the transactions have started. So it has been in the beginning itself. So the locator control determined submit level has been begun over here now. And then I go to the lot and serial numbers. And then here I have now made the uniqueness is no uniqueness because what happens, I'm going to have multiple lot, lot numbers with the same number because I've already practiced it on one of the numbers now I'm going to place to go around. So on T01, I have already done everything. So I do not want to have any uniqueness. So for this exercise, I made it as no uniqueness. And then when you generate a lot, you'll be generating as lot underscore org underscore. And then it is now going to have a zero, zero padding with the 15 characters as total length. And then it is a lot underscore org underscore. And then serial also, I'm not generating at the org level, SL underscore org. And then the starting number is 103. I've already uh, done the serial number generation for this one. So it is not showing at this one. So SL underscore org underscore and then lot underscore org underscore. And then I have created one picking rule and then put it over here now actually. So S01 picking rule is the one I put it. So we are going to see the what's called the functioning of the picking rule to a great extent actually. So this is the one. So any doubts on this organization setups? Fine. So you know that. So here is what fine. So close it and then cancel it. If you have any doubts, immediately then and there ask me. Otherwise, what happens? I'll be forgetting it. This presentation will be going at a high speed, and then uh, you have to stop and ask. Then only what happens? I will understand that you are having some doubts on this on any part. So it's not done. Fine. Now the data access has been made. Fine. The inventory manager, the shipping agent, warehouse manager. And then the uh, what's called the production operator, production supervisor, everything has been made. Now, right? Everything has been completed. It is not on M001, it is on E0111. <clears throat> so 
in the organization. Now I'm going to create six components and then one finished good for this exercise actually. I'll now go there. So first of all, before this is what happened, let me make a change of this T to yes actually. And go there, I'm going to keep your cursor on the top, control H, and then T01, I will now replace with S01, <clears throat> and then click on replace all. So by which I'm now replacing all. So 13 replacements have been made now, I click on okay, and then I will now save it now. Save. So I'm now going to create these components actually. So these components are the components of a parent item. I know that I finished good. So let me go there and then create the first one. Take a copy of it now and then go there. <laughs> click on done. And then I'll now go to this place. Click on done. Come out of it. <coughs> I will now go to product management and then I go to the product information management and then I'm going to create this item. So click on create it now. Go to create it now. So I'm working on my A010R. So A010 is a master for me. Go there. The template is coming. The purchase template is there. I click on OK. I go inside. <clears throat> and then I'm going to paste this. It will uh, extend for approximately two hours now, fine. Two hours or more, actually. So be ready for this now. See, yes, zero one serial control is already there, it seems. So fine. That means what? In yes, zero one, I have already made it, I think. So we'll now use some other. Uh, Prefix now, fine. We're not giving a red color. We'll now go on and see on S01 whether we have anything or not. Space. I might have tested it actually. Go there. S01 and then query for it now. Oh, I got so many items on this. And I will now remove this S01. I will now go for C01 now. Fine. Go there. Click on it. So let me go on and search on C01. You know, see anything there. Or, you know, say uh, CDEF G01. Let me query on G01 now. There is no item that I will not go on and it. So I don't find anything on this now. I'll now make it as a G01. So go to the top and then give a control H and then S01. I will now change it to the G01. So click on replace all because I have made a lot of experiments on this one. So click on OK and then click on close now. So it is now G01. So let me go on and create my first item on this now. I want to take it off with the G01. I'm using it now. Click on done and then come out of it and then go for create it. So click on the task carousel on the right hand side and then click on the create run. I will now put my item over here now. And the master organization is A010. And then I go there. Click on OK now. <clears throat> I will now populate the item over here now. And then give a tap. Now it is not becoming red. And so that means what? It is not the item is not there actually. So in the description, I'm putting it now. I go there. And then I go to the specifications and then here I'm now going to make it as what push now. So push means what? A movement request will be created and then the item will be pushed into manufacturing. Before we start the transactions, actually, this is a push type. The supply type is push now. Now go down, and then I will now make the supply type and make the supply type as push. So we will now create a movement request for this, and then we are going to push it into the manufacturing directly. Supply type, supply type is push now. So I will now go to the inventory, and then this is going to be a serial control. Go to the inventory. This is going to be a serial control item. I will now go down, and then in this place, serial, I will now make it as a dynamic. That's it. Item is created. I'm going to assign it to the child or not. I'm going to go to the association and let me assign it to the child or. So go to the actions and go to select NAT. If you're making any mistake, please, then and there you point out to me, A0111, and then enter it now. Because if I, you will not, the simulation will not be correct if I make a mistake, actually. And that's it. I'm going to click on seven close. The first item is now created. So we have to create seven items for this exercise, actually. So the first item, which is a serial control item, which is having a push type, actually. The type is a push. Go there. So go there, go and then take the lot control. So the lot control, I'm going to make it now. Fine, go that click on it. So first is serial control, and then click on create it up, and then I'm going to make a lot control. A010. <clears throat> so click on OK now. So the lot control will be having an assembly pull now. Fine. Only at the end of the assembly, it will be pulled into the manufacturing actually. I'm going to have three operations for this now. So on the 30th operation, I'm going to pull it, and then not on the 20th. I'm now going to use this component on the 20th operation, but I'll be pulling it into the assembly, into the into the shop floor only on the 30th operation. Go that, click on it. So I'll now paste it over here. I'll click on it. Paste it over here. Description. And then go to the specifications. It is assembly pull. <clears throat> it's assembly pull. Okay, fine. Go, that. go to the inventory, and then there's a lot control. So control is a full control. And then here, I'm now going to use what? The shelf life now. Normally, it will be user defined. Especially in the, in the medical industry, it will be user defined. But sometimes, what happens if you are going to buy banana, buy a payam? If you keep it on the shelf in three days, it will be getting spoiled. And so, what happens there? You'll be having what? The shelf life days as three days. You'll be giving it for items, edible items. You'll be using this control for, for other items. You'll be using user defined. 
So I'm going to use a user-defined control and I'll connect the full control. So go that click on it. So it is a shelf life user-defined. Then the lot control is assembly pull fine. Go that click on it. The item is ready. And then we'll now go on and assign it to the organization. Go to the association and then let me assign it to the organization. Go to select NAT and then let me assign it. It's A0111 and then entering now. Please, then and there, you point out my mistakes, basically, because I'm speaking and doing, and then I'm likely to make mistakes, actually. Save and close, by which the second item is now created. You'll now go for the third item. Is the revision control. Go that click on it. So take note of it. Go to the revision control. So click on it. Go there. And then click on create item. I'm going to get it. So remember, remember, revision is not an attribute at all. The revision is not an attribute. So the system will now sense this item as a no control item only when it is going to move it into the shop floor. Upon moving, it will be sensing this as only a, what's called a, what's called a no control item only. So click on OK now. So the, here the top separate type is operation pull now. I go that type on. You go to the specifications and then make a change of the separate type to operation pull now. And the manufacturing area, I'm now making it to the operation pull. That means what? At the end of this operation, it will be pulled into manufacturing actually. Operation pull. And then you go to the inventory. And then I'm going to make it as a revision control now. Revision control is yes now. I go that you want it. And then here I go there. And then that's it. Fine. So revision control is yes. And then uh, there is the operation pull. And then now we do that. I will now go to the associations and then let me associate with the China. Uh, small question, sir. Then tell me. Yeah, any questions you can ask me. Yeah, so as, uh, operation pool is at the end of the operation, the yeah. backlash, and assembly pool is at the end of the completion of the. Uh, exactly, the final operation. Upon final operation, the component will be pulled into uh, manufacturing action. Is it the final operation or the completion of the job? It is the final operation. I, maybe I, I think it's a completion of the job completion only. The yeah, job. yeah, the completion of the job. Yeah. You are very correct. So if you do the movement in EBIS, we have the movement of what from uh, uh, 50 Q to 50 to move. And then afterwards you complete it. Here, there is no such concept at all. You can only complete it directly. We cannot move it to the final, uh, the do move operation. So the inter-operation steps of Q running and then all those things are not there in fusion at all. So all the things are coupled together. So the final operation and then uh, the what's called uh, the move to, uh, to move, everything is only one. Got it? <clears throat> that is so go there go to that so this is the one i go there go to the actions then go to self net so while speaking if i forget anything please then and there remember me because if i make one mistake the entire simulation will not work at all then again go on and make a check of the specifications of specifications you now go there it's basically what you go to the manufacturing and then make a check now so manufacturing is operation pull and then if you go to the inventory it's revision is yes now that's it so go there click on it and then go to save and close that's it so it is not done. So now I am going to make a make a revision now. Fine. I will now make two revisions for this now. Fine. Now the child or revisions are basically child or controlled attributes. So we will now go there and then make two revisions for this now. Fine. Go that you want it. We'll now go to the browse items and then query for it now. I am going to make two revisions. Paste it over here. Take what happened. Click on search now. It's very fast. And then uh, stop me there and there and then ask me questions now. Otherwise, I will assume that you are understanding everything. This is a child or you go there. Yeah, finish good yet? Finish good is seventh item. We are okay. in the third item now. Okay, that should be con uh, located control. Okay. Right. You go there. You go to the actions and then go to what? You go to manage revisions now. I am going to make a revision. So click on plus now. I will now make two revisions now. I go there. The A2. Go there. Click on it. I will now say why we are making the revisions for cost reduction. And then I will now put a place date now. Fine. So it's not accepting it because it's not saying it's the back date. It should not be backdated. And go there. Click on it. So it's coming as what? 21 7. <clears throat> uh, 21. 748, I will now make it a 749 now. And then uh, it's okay, save and close. So it's a future data. Fine, go that one, it's not separate. Go there, we'll now make one more revision also. Go to manage revisions. And then I'll now give a plus now. Let me make A3 revision also. So A3, <clears throat> go there. So put appropriate reasoning for this revision now. And then uh, put today's date, it will not accept it. And then we'll now change it to what? 50 now. Go that one, we'll now make it a 50. 50th minute now. So it is a 49th minute, it's the 50th minute. So what happens? A2 and A3. A3 is a later exhibition of fine on it. So the later exhibition fine goes on seven close by which what happens if we are completed? Two revisions for this item, A2 and A3 on the child org now. The next is what? I'm not going to make three dummy components. Three dummy components, I'm going to make it now. So if it is a revision as a dummy, even if you don't have any stock, you can move. Whereas for a lot control, we cannot have. If, if we don't have a lot number, we cannot move on the shop floor. I'm going to show it to you. So the dummy, no control, as well as the revision, no control. We are not going to have any stocks, but the system will now accept it now. We can even, what happens, the popularity of stock later. So inventory can be driven negative during the shop floor movement. 
if you are having a no control and revision control revision control revision is not attribute and so it is it will be system will be treating this as only a no control item and so it will allow you to make a transaction whereas lot is not so serial and lot when you are moving it on the shop floor we need the numbers now right? otherwise it will not move at all and what that wanted so let us now go there and then create that what's called the first dummy no control item and what that wanted i'll not click on done now come out of it i'll now go on and get an item so click on create item and then i'm going to create the next item fine a010 <coughs> So click on OK now. Fine. So this is going to be operation pool again. And go to the specifications and then have a look at it now. Fine. I now make a change to operation pool now. The operation pool. <clears throat> the previous item was operation pool. Now I think I've done it again. Probably I'm not sure about it. So this is not going to have any control at all. I'm not going to be inventory. Fine. There is a no control. Fine. Go that component. So no G01 dummy no control. Fine. Go that component. Description. Component. I will now go to the associations and let me associate with child dog. So go there. Go to actions and go to select net. So I'm going to associate with child dog. Fine. A zero one one one. And then entering now. Select it and then click on apply and then done. <coughs> That's it. Move on. So do not. So go there and then commit it now. Fine. Save it. Seven close. Fine. Item is now created and then assigned. Fine. Go that component. We'll now go for a dummy lot control. Fine. Dummy lot control. So I'll we'll now go there. Click on it. We're now going to create it. Fine. Click on create it. Up. <coughs> and then here it is a A zero one <coughs> zero. And then we click on OK. Fine. The fifth item is now getting created. I'm going to click on paste it now. Paste it over here now. Underscore description. And then go to the specifications. This is again an operation pool now. I'll now make it as an operation pool. <clears throat> remember, the item attributes can be changed on the work order actually. The supply type can be changed on the work order if you want. You can override this actually. Okay, go to the inventory. And then this is a lot control. And then here I'm not just making it as a full control, but without any shelf life control. Fine, because it's a dummy one. So I don't want this control of doing and only full full lot control I'm making now. So the supply type has been changed. If I go to the associations, then I'll let me associate with the child or with the go that click on it. Then it's a E011. Enter it now. Apply and then click on that. Then we're now assigned it. So it is now getting assigned. So we go for the sixth item that is going to be a dummy revision control. So take it all the way. Then we'll now make a dummy revision control now. Click on create it up. <coughs> So it's a E01 <coughs> zero. And then click on OK. And then it is again an operation pull. Go to the specifications because you are now going to pull everything on the 30th move now. When you move on the 30th one, we are going to pull it at the LF and click on operation pull. Uh, and then afterwards you go there, go to the inventory, and then here it's going to be revision control will be yes. So revision control is yes. I'm not going to give any new revisions because it is only a dummy one. We are not going to have any stock at all. And go that click on it. So in the inventory, I've made it as a well, revision as yes now, and then in the manufacturing, it's an operation pool now. <coughs> go to the associations and we associate with the child dog now. And go that click on it. And then it is not coming because the item has not been properly so again. And paste it over here now. Description. Fine. Any other mistakes, please point out to me. Actions and then go to select map. Please watch it very keenly and the map. Any small mistakes also, I will not be exactly able to simulate in the exercise actually. Click on done now. Fine, go there. So this sixth item is now saved, and then we go for the final item. We go for the final item. That's called finish goal. So now go there. Take of it, and now go there. Click on it. <clears throat> Click on create item. It is a E zero one zero. And then now this I will not throw it away, and then bring in the finished goods. Finished goods. I am going to bring it over here now. Click on it. Click on okay. Now I am applying a finished good template, and then go there. I will not copy the item over here now. Fine, copy the item. Description and then go there. Go to the specifications. Normally, a finished good will be an assembly, assembly full type. So the what's called if you go to the manufacturing now, and you can now see that the what's called uh, the supply type will be assembly full. We'll make it as assembly full because uh, you won't supply this into the what's called the component only for a rework or a maintenance. You'll be supplying the parent into the component. So other than what happens, it is normally an assembly full. You go to the inventory. And then here I'm going to enable all the four controls for this item. Remember, all the four controls I'm going to enable it now. Fine. So it will be serial lot revision and locator control actually. I will now go to the inventory now. I will now enable all the four controls. Now. Revision control is yes now. Fine. That is the first control. I go that one. Lot control is going to be a full control now. No dates basically for this exercise for this one. I have got only for the second item or the third item. I'm having this uh, second item. I'm having control for the, for the, for the finished good. I'm not having this uh, shelf life control. So the second control has been made now. The third control is what I make it as a dynamic entry. 
and then the fourth control is what locator control thank you that's what i will not make the i am going to restrict the sub inventory and then i will not further restrict the locator also so the item is now restricted to a sub inventory and locator so that means what it can be transacted to only specified locators and sub inventory so i will go that's what i will make the please please take one question tell me tell me sir is question tell me tell me tell me <clears throat> yeah the locator is restricted okay Yeah, but suppose the locator has got a capacity, right? Dimension yeah. capacity and weight capacity. Yeah. So once the capacity is full, mm. then the system should give a. Uh, inventory will not do that at all. You have to have the uh, what I mean, the lock fire license for this one. Lock fire. Okay. Lock fire license is required for ordering R2L, your capacity by weight and volume. The in the R two L, uh, the warehouse. Not only also it will not honor. In R two L also it will not honor the weight and volume. It is only for information. Warehouse management. Warehouse man. WMS. WMS. Yeah. WMS it will honor. Okay. WMS, we can write a rule. We have to write a rule. Fine. Then only what happens? As per the rule, it will give you the alert. Huh? As per the rule, it will give you the alert yes, or exactly. error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, uh, pure inventory will not behave like a e-biz inventory only. Fine. It will not honor the weight and volume, and so okay. you only have to write. And then uh, WMS is now with the lock fire license, and then that will be only done. Good. Fine. Okay. So, locator restrictions is on. Uh, sub inventory and locator restrictions are on. That means what? The item can be transacted to a specific sub inventory and then specific locator only. Fine. All the four controls are on now. Any doubts? Any doubts? I go. I go to the association. Then I will associate the child. I go to the actions. Then go to select match. And then let me associate the child. A zero one one one. Enter now. So the one. Click on apply. Click on that. And then click on save. Now I am going to create a structure actually. So for structure, what happens is now sometimes in twenty one A it needs this product data C word <coughs> role. Uh, in twenty one A, I found one of my students told me that this is not required for items sir, but for structure it is now asking for it now. So this concept will now keep on changing and then see about how exactly it is behaving. Now. And and one more thing is what if you go there, go to the place, and then if you go to the setup and maintenance, <coughs> find what I click on actions and then go to go to offerings now, and then go to the PIM now. <coughs> So, if you don't have a license for PIM, if you don't have a license for PIM, you have a license only for inventory. What you do is you go to the opt-in features now, and then remove these two things now. Fine, the governance and consolidation you remove it now. So, if you go down and then see data governance, you remove it, and then consolidation also you remove it now. Data consolidation. So, in some instances, the data governance and data consolidation are stopping you from creating the item actually. But here it is on. You see, it is on. It is working. in case if you are getting a problem of uh, the root item class is not coming on your item creation then you disable these two governance as well as consolidation if remove it it will come now the concepts are getting changed now when that fine now you see in 21a yeah, yeah, it's working even with this on i tell me yeah. governance and this consolidation has to be disabled but i want to use the feature of governance and consolidation yeah then that case you must have the pim license actually if you have the pim license you can use all these things now, right governance and consolidation if you have pim license i don't know pim So, if you have a PIM license, you can very well use it now. Fine. So, learn from PIM about how to create the item, including PIM. PIM will be having even item approvals actually. So, there are all yeah. the places where you have to go and then make a check actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But again, truly speaking, it's working now with the governance and consolidation is working for me. But sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, if it doesn't work, you go there and disable it. It will work. Now we will now create a structure for the finished good, and then I will now populate all the six components on the finished good. Now, fine, go there, click on it. I will now go to the home, and then click on the product management, <clears throat> and then you go to the product information management, and click on it. Hey Surya, uh, we uh, others, you are able to understand now? Fine. Any any doubts on this now? Till now. Sir, no, 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 no. small doubt, no, no. We are created the finished goods with uh, enable lot control, serial control, and revision control, right? Yeah, But all the four uh, controls are enabled. Yeah, if. If uh, is it for testing enabled or uh, if, if it is a component? Are, uh, in reality, it depends upon actual rules. In reality, okay. you have to see about how exactly uh, the end, end customer is using accordingly. So for testing purposes, I enabled all the four controls, and I will show it to you. And then in reality, if they have the finished good only as a serial control or a lot control or multiple combinations, you have to do according. Okay. So is a master of fine. Go there, click on it, and then I'll create a structure. Now. First, I will now go and create a structure on the master of. And the first line is a master of pancake on it. I will now go and get a structure. I go to the structures. Any doubts? You just ask me then and there. If I go there, so structures action, and then I will now go to the create now. I am going to create a structure action. Pancake on create now. I will now use the primary one now. I will now say it's a primary. And then click on apply and add details. You go inside now. 
this primary is a lookup right if i want the lookup of course yes it's a lookup only it doesn't have any functionality as such no very correct the primary is just lookup what actions i'm going to select that so here i will not put g01 i must get all the six components over here you can see it so 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 are all the six are coming fine with the left hand side go there i will now with the control i will now do multiple selections on this now i am selecting all the six components of this now fine with the click on apply and click on okay it gets applied and in my order management training if you go there go to the view and then if you go and then see the order management component order management i have explained everything about the options and mutual exclusive and options and mutual exclusive and that the mutual exclusive options have been fully explained in my order management training so go and then buy and then uh, do it now by this <clears throat> so click on done now fine it is all done now so go there so the the structure for the primary is now made and go that click on it and then i will give a save and close so the structure is now made so once when you make a structure it doesn't get copied into the child at all automatically and go that click on it and then if you open the child the structure will not be visible you have to make the uh, so structure has to be made separately more than the master and child and there is no question of assigning and things and then before i go for that a small bit of marketing now fine i am now selling my records at my website oraclenana.com and then here the advantage of this is what uh you in many institutes if you go there you will not find the contact details of the trainer at all they will not be giving you and then you will not be able to uh, communicate with them and then for any doubts and things so you can talk to me and then uh, they don't give any after sales service at all That's the biggest problem and then i have a big group of around 500 past students so i will be associating it to you over there so you can even discuss with them and then if i don't know somebody may even answer you some other questions what are the subjects now uh, inventory purchasing order management yeah on the fusion side and then uh, we have got around four and five if you go to the scm agenda and you click on the scm agenda page there you can see this many records the first 10 or first 11 are my records actually first 11 are records for which you will now get both records and docs and then uh, i routine yeah. purchasing i procurement manufacturing order management procurement inventory as a per portal okay thank you so all the records are available they are all my teachings actually and then if you go down and then i am now buying something in the market and then planning scm technical financial adf good oracle integration okay and ebis auto profit funding is also there so if you are happy with that what happens you can go there click on the payment terms you know fine payment details is there click on it in the payment details you, you can even click on the link and then go directly or otherwise you can even register my bank account and if you are not in india you can even uh, use uh, via next fast remit or remitly for or instant this the things are there so they will be asking me my details you have to build up and then do it now find the details so fill it up and then do it now so this is one way of doing it otherwise what happens if you click on the link it is a indian payment gateway so you can use your indian debit card credit card and then net banking now so it will ask you the name the email and then phone number and then click on next now so it will be paying 10000 rupees directly so you can even use your indian debit card credit cards and then indian net banking via the payment gateway so one of the methods you can use it now fine you have the payment button also fine so the biggest advantage again i am telling you is what he will get a lot of assistance from us and somebody will now support you they will now clarify your doubts when you are implementing the product that is the biggest advantage when compared to this so thanks for watching it now fine so that you want so i will close it it is called oraclenana.com that is my website name oraclenana.com website so now i am in the child or so here i am now going to create what the structure for it now fine i will know the usual practice is what will be creating in the common from we will now make a commoning from the master actually so that whenever you make a change on the master the changes will now automatically reflect to the child and then you cannot modify the child at all and take on the great from common actions great from common i'm going to write now so my master org is what a0 and then it's a master org a01 so is a01 master org and then the item is what g01 underscore and then if you give a tab there is only one structure available there that will be coming automatically over here now if you have multiple structures you have to choose it accordingly so when the master logs no structure i am going to create a child or commoning now so click on okay this is nothing but an item import so it will now run a series of concurrence four or five concurrence will be running for commoning it actually so go there so it is not running go there click on save and close now this is now completed so the structure is now completed now create a bill for the above fg with the above six components and then common it to again the organization is what a0111 as i tested on m01 on the vision instance actually so i am now testing on my instance actually so we will now have to have this following so submit notice if you make any change in the structure yeah you have master if you make a change the changes will automatically reflect on the child actually there is okay. no need to you cannot modify anything on the child part because it is okay. common actually so click on done and then you will now go there you will now have a look at the submit notice fine click on the seven minus and you have a look at the submit notice so click on it so go to search now and then it is manage 
sub percentage locator percentage and entry now so go to space and the subunit is located in the now so the organization is a01 11 and then entry now the organization so here uh, i have to have what one fgs subunit so i will create the subunit entry and that so here i am going to restrict my finish good now fine because my finish to go to having a subunit restriction and locator restriction will go there and then restrict and what they call it manage item subunit is a restriction so is the highest restriction available in oracle now so choose the subunit entry and then click on the manage item subunit is and then go to add it is the highest restriction available in oracle fine what i have already tested it on yes uh, some t01 so now i am now doing it to test on g01 thank you complex now let me add this one. so it's a g01 underscore f and then give a tap uh, item will be coming so i am not testing the remaining ones now fine the minimum quantity maximum quantity, everything has been tested in the inventory so buy my records on inventory and then see about how exactly all these things are done now so click on save and close now so give and then keep my cursor on the g and then go to the locators now i am going to restrict the locator also and click on it so click on plus now let me restrict it to a locator called 222 iphone 222 iphone 222 so item can be transacted only to this locator no other locator actually it can be transacted only to this fgs and then only to the locator so by which what happens the sub inventory restrictions and locator restrictions are given for the finished good now click on done now got it and go that so it's not done <coughs> and now what happens we have one more uh, sub inventory called stage one in which what happens i'm going to keep all my raw materials over there now click on it so i now open up the stage uh, one small question yeah, tell me yeah if the if the raw material is locator controlled and it is restricted to that locator like the way you have done for the finished goods yeah 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 at the time of issuing of the material it yeah, will force yeah. you to use that locator right you cannot yeah, use yeah. you just go through this what happens everything has not been simulated in this exercise something something has been simulated just i have watched okay. fine i have simulated only certain things and then you will be able to understand that now. this stage one is a locator controlled one fine go click on it so here what i am doing is i have created three locators 100 200 and 300 so here for uh, understanding purposes for the training purposes 200 is now given the top priority and the pick order is going to be one on this now fine on the 200 i'm going to give a pick order as one now fine with the one now one have it so i click on that what's called i will now go the click on it i will now go to the manage locators now <clears throat> the manage locators if you go then click on the 100 and then click on edit now it is having a least priority and then the pick order is 3 now on the 100 you can cancel now 200 is the top priority if you go there and then click on it i've given a pick order of one now the pick order is one now and you cancel now and then if you go to the 300 now and then click on edit mode and then here it will be having an intermediate priority so as far as picking is concerned the pick order on the locator is what 200 first if the material is not available it will go on and search in 300 if it is still not available it will go on and search on 100 now. <coughs> and then i have not made any items of any restrictions now. fine in this one i have not made anything at all so for this exercise i have made only the locators with the locator order now locator picking order has been given on the stage one actually and then I am now going to have one staging sub inventory, which is a no locator control. And then that will be very near to the manufacturing area. And then I'm going to move my items from stage one to staging actually. <coughs> from stage one to staging, I'm going to move it. The staging sub inventory is very near to my shop flow. And then from there, it will be consumed. Small question, sir. Small mm -hmm. question. So you have given the sequence of the locators for uh, priority in the... Yeah, exactly. On the managed locators. But it is possible to give the priority by the expiry date. Ali expiry date. Expiry date. Time. See, that's what I'm denying. Everything is not tested in this exercise. Now, fine. I am now testing expiry date only on the lot, fine. not on the sub inventory. Sub inventory, I know. I'm not even uh, given anything on the sub inventory at all. I'm not. Sub inventory it. level expiry date will not be there. Lot level only expiry will be there. Yeah, lot only will be having an expiry. Sub inventory may have an end date or something like that. Yeah, click on edit now. So it is going to end on uh, what's called if you put an end date as a May, uh, 1st of May, it will be it will not be able to perform any transactions beyond the date actually. Okay, that's it. So I'm now going to keep all my stocks in this place. Again, remember everything is not simulated, only certain things are simulated, and then from there you can simulate whatever you want. Fine, that gives you an idea about how to simulate everything. And then I'm this is my supply sub inventory for the manufacturing actually. My supply sub inventory is what staging. My completion sub inventory is FGS actually. S01 is the SES, the one. So my supply sub inventory is staging. And then my completion sub inventory is S01, SES. <coughs> and my middle will be available, everything here now. <coughs> it need not be here, it can be anywhere. It can be in multiple places. But the picking rule will now automatically pick as per your picking concept, picking a priority, and then put it on the staging actually. The picking rule is now going to pick up from the staging end and then put on the staging. So we can even have the raw material spread over multiple sub inventories and then finally reach the staging because this is our supply sub inventory. Any doubts? 
So this is just no fine because I can't. So everything is now done. Fine. I will know afterwards what happens. You can even go to the manage production lookups now, and then I give all the lookups whatever you want now. Click on that now. <clears throat> so now have a look at. So, yeah, yeah, small question. Yeah, tell me. So the the material value hmm. will be uh, once it is moved to the stage, the all the raw material is is taken into the stage. Yeah, of course. And the material valuation will go out, right? It will be also. No, no, no. It is still in your own organization only. It has not gone to the manufacturing at all. <clears throat> Okay. Only when you make a move into the manufacturing, then only what happens is the inventory value will be decremented. Otherwise, it will not be decremented at all. Okay. Only when you move. Now, till as long as it is the stage, it, the valuation will not affect at all. Remember, only when you move into VIP, at that time only the valuation will now come in. Right. The VIP will be charged, but then the inventory, sub inventory will be decremented actually. Yeah, I have a practical problem here. Uh huh. The software, the problem is suppose a job is running for suppose fifteen days. Okay. So your raw material is consumed, so inventory valuation is reduced. Okay. But your product is not yet uh, finalized. Okay. So your product cost, product product value... cost will now get hit only upon inventorization, upon completion of them bringing it to him. Yes. Then only what about the product cost will be coming up. So yeah. the inventory, yeah. entire inventory value, VIP value will be reduced. And then let us say VIP has already consumed around one hundred twenty dollars now. And then upon completion, VIP value will be made to zero, and then yeah. your finished goods will be charged to one twenty. Uh, but if the job is running for 15 days in a yeah, till now what happens your fgs will not be charged at all it will not be getting any at all so i don't know how to do this now fine your question is a good one and then uh, let us say at the end of march the job is not completed and then you have to report uh, what happened to the management regarding that is a mismatch right people. because your raw material is consumed but finished goods yeah, is not finished good is not there <laughs> good question anybody here who knows financials on this now if a job is part completed Sanjay is asking, "What will happen to the costing part now? Fine, because you are going to push everything to costing, and then you are going to cost it also. And again, you have to talk to so them." So there is a concept called incremental backlash in uh, R twelve OPM, but uh, 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 incremental backlash. Incremental uh? backlash in OPM Oracle Process Manufacturing R twelve e business. I don't know whether it is there or not, but uh, here again, this costing part, I am not very clear upon this now. <coughs> Somebody only has to do. I'm also not very clear, but I had to work. That's why some of the yeah. things have seen. He's already working on this manufacturing, so he's getting stuck. If anybody has got any any solution for this, no fine. Please uh, communicate to me at nana dot app sixty at gmail dot com. That is my email ID. So I mean, communicate. I will not communicate to all of this. So you go there and then go to the manual production level and then go to the decision course and then I give all the reason course whatever you want. No fine. So the reason course can be cancelled now. And then similarly, you go to the work order subtype. Subtype can also be created now. And there are so many subtypes here. Create an open test pilot. So this is mainly for what happens here: repair and rework. You can even create a subtype actually. So that is again a logo. And then go there. And then the resource activity. Fine, go back to one. So we can even set up run and then tier. And then these are all the activities. But this is not equivalent to the IOS interoperation steps of EBS. No, fine. That is not so. Fine. It is again a lookup actually. Go back to one. Cancel now. And then go to the resource class now. Fine, go back to one class. And then we can even create. A, I created one labor class. And then we can have multiple classes created over here. I will now use this labor in my uh, setup now. Actually, fine, go cancel now. So go back to one. And then I will now go to the resource group now. So clearly, resources can be grouped now. Fine, this is mainly for the planning center. Actually. The planning center will be grouping the resources actually. Fine, go back to cancel. And then uh, do all these lookups basically. And then afterwards, what happens? Go there. Manage plant profiles now. The plant profiles. Institute okay, okay, no. management profiles. Lokesh, are you there? Lokesh, can you open up your mic and speak? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you are you working on any manufacturing activity also? Uh, not yet. No. Not I'm, yet. I'm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's a big man, and then uh, he has uh, done a lot of implementations on inventory procurement and order management. Actually, he is not a touched manufacturing. So there is one default UAM class. Fine, click on it. This is for hover based one. Fine. Once when I learn lead time management, I will be talking to you. Fine. I will learn it now. So. He can even put in site level and then he can override the user level actually. So this this is for the this thing now. Fine, the units of measures for the time based ones. Fine, click on answer now. And then afterwards you go there again, which is your hover based one. Fine, go there. So hover based, you can see hover is the one. So on site level. So all see is hover units of measures is this one now. You can answer. And then you go to the default manufacturing plant or. So here I have set up mine actually fine for my user of A zero one EMP one. A zero one 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 is my default or. <coughs> So whenever I open the manufacturing area, this org will be defaulted. So you can even make one of the org as a default org, and then you can override the defaults uh, and then make a change. So these are the ones now. Fine, go back to one. So do the profiles as well as the production lookups now. 
complete everything and then go there. Now, if you look at the manage plan parameters, this has to be set properly. Come on, take a copy and go there. So, you go to the manage plan parameters. <clears throat> so, go to the manage plan parameters. And then here, I'm going to set it up. So, my supply sub inventory is staging, whereas I'm going to keep on a locator controlled one now. Right? Here in this place, what happens? I'm now going to keep everything on the locator controlled one now. <clears throat> so, my what's called stage one is locator controlled, and then I'm going to keep all my stock. All the all the stocks and then keep it on the locator control. But my supplies have been very staging. So I will now make a movement request and then move this material from stage one to staging now. Stage one to staging, I'm going to make it. So this is the supply submittery. So this is the one. And then my finished submittery is this. And then here the default completion is 22, 22, 22. But when I transact my FGS, I cannot transact on it. Tell me where I can transact now. Anybody? I cannot transact on 22 at all. I cannot transact it because my item. My finished good item is the submitment restricted and locator restricted now. Anybody? Have you remembered where I have restricted it actually? Yeah. Yeah. It is on 222. I have restricted on 222, whereas the plant parameters will now default on your move transactions to 22 and then it will not accept it. So I will now have a default picking rule, the pick slip grouping rule, the other release rule, and then everything has been explained in my order management training. And then I'm going to print the pick slips, and then you can include the pull components. Normally, pull components will be issued, but it is even preferable to have the push also. So the OP and AP items will also be what happens the movement request will be created. So once when you create a movement request for even the push components, what happens? You will be able to honor the company's picking philosophy, actually. It is not necessary, but uh, you can even manually push it. OP and AP can manually push it, but this is preferable now. And if you if you do it like this, what happens? Your components will be picked by a picked by a movement request, actually. So I'm not enabling all the green offerings that I wanted. So this one, so I'm now using a proper calendar over here now. Click on it. <clears throat> These are all the sequences which I'm going to use now. And then if you go to this place now, find So I'm not touching any of the defaults actually. And then this way it's working actually. So I've done it actually. Find whether you want it. Cancel it. <clears throat> so this planned parameters is now completed now. <clears throat> so uh, now after having done this now, what happens? You, you will now create a picking rule actually. Find out the picking rule. So let us now go to the manage picking rules now. Manage percentage. Pick percentage. Rule percentage. <coughs> so go to the manage picking rules. Let me create a picking rule and show you, but I'm not going to put them this place. Now click on plus now. Fine. Let me create a picking rule. So it's a, it is a G01 underscore picking rule. So you will be discussing with the end customer about how you want to have it. You want to so here on the first priority, we have got four things locator, lot, revision, and sub inventory. Remember, serial number is not a constant of picking at all. Serial number is not a constant of a picking. So serial number cannot be done. So I'll go there. Last. Lot will be normally first expiry, first out. You will be very rarely using the first in, first out, or otherwise ascending and descending. So I'll now use the very common one of first expiry, first out. No, as first priority. <coughs> go to the second priority. So here I will now make what revision now. Revision will always be descending now. The latest revision will be having all the latest features. And so <coughs> you'll be giving the customers only the latest now. <coughs> For example, Hamamso is now having a revision A1 now. Now, Luxus brought a new fragrance. Now we will now start to manufacture Hamam with the A2 revision. A2 is now matching the Lux features. So in your stock, you have 50,000 pieces of A1 and then 5,000 of A2. But you will not give only 5,000. But the A2 only you will not give because you have to compete in the market. So the A1, you will now offer some, what happens, a buy one, get one fee or some offers, and then you will now have a clearance sale actually for the A1. So the latest revision only will be given to the customers because we had to compete in the market actually. So as far as revision is concerned, you've got plenty of offer, uh, things are there now. Right? So one of them you have to use, I'm not choosing the descending now. And then as far as the locator is concerned, what happens, I'm now going to use what ascending. So I have ascending priority as one now, fine. One will be picked up first now, which one? Is having this one, anybody remembering it now? I have got what happens 100, 200, and 300. So, out of which 200 is having the top priority, there's one, and then afterwards 300, and then afterwards 100. So, 200, 300, and 100 is a uh, priority, locator priority. I have given the peak order, so I'm not giving locator as a name. So, this much has been given, make it as active, and then allow partial picking also because we are going to pick up from multiple things now, or multiple transactions. So, go there. So, click on save and close now. No doubt. <clears throat> And then after having done this now, what you do is you go there, keep a cursor on this and then click on the manager signals. So we can assign it <coughs> to multiple combinations actually. And go to the organization what? A011. And give it a sequence is 10 now, fine, for sequence. The picking rule is what? G01. And give it a. And then here you're going to use the criteria. 
So if you go for an item criteria, you have to have multiple sequences. Fine. So let us say 10,000 items means what? 10,000 sequences will be coming. It's very, very difficult. So criteria is very difficult. Category is the best one. Fine. You can even group uh, what happens, uh, yeah, group of items on my category. And then those will be governed by this picking rule actually. So if you can do it, you can do it. Otherwise, what happens, the customer specific or carrier specific, there are multiple criteria are there. We can even have the destination sub also as a stage now. So whichever is going to the staging will be governed by the thing. So one of them I can give it now. So for this exercise, what happens is I have now given what? I have not given anything at all in this place. Let me give a save now. I make it as active and then save it. Uh, it looks like there is a big enhancement in this uh, compared to R2. This uh, picking rule is very much uh, powerful. No. It is exactly same like EBUS now. I have tested it. Okay. Whatever feature you see in EBUS, everything is available here also. So even is also having the same thing now, and there is no dis difference at all on this. I have said checked it actually. Okay. So if you okay. go there, correct it. So if you want to remove the activeness, so EBIS is also having all the four now. If you go there, locator, lot, revision, and then sub is also having the same thing. Whatever you find, everything here is all available in EBIS also. There is no, no in change. In the assignment area, in the assignment area, you have so many. Options. Assignment area, there also we have so many things now. We have got so many, uh, this many, uh, these things are available actually. You can see. This criteria are available in EBIS also. <coughs> all these criteria are available. There is no difference at all. Got it now, fine. So this way it works. So I have not given any assignments. So what I did is I went there and then I have now put my S01 picking rule on this manage inventory order. That means what for all items will be governed by this. So if an item does not have any specific picking rule, if it doesn't fall on this now, the organization parameters in one will be coming into picture. So that will be that picking rule will be chosen for picking actually. And if you are not given any picking rule over there, then the default picking of middle management is what? Always the last in first order. The absolute last in first order, the default one. If you go to the place, given. So here also you are not given anything. And then if an item is not governed by uh, any picking rule uh, there and then here, then the absolute last in first order is a middle management concept that has been programmed already. So my picking rule is exactly the same. No fine, we'll cancel, no fine. What else? So I have now done the picking rule like this now. Lot is first, first expiry, first out, then revision descending, and then located descending as a name. So we can have only four priorities in emails also, we can have only four priorities. So this has been done now. And there is no change on the picking rule, exactly the same. So I have now assigned this picking rule. I have made only S01, not this one. I have not made it. And there is a, because when you make a change, the changes will not take a longer time to reflect. Now. I had to wait for two, three hours for me to make a transaction. Otherwise, what happens? The transaction will not reflect. I had to run LDAP or something like that to make all the setups visible on the transaction area. So I'm not changing it. It is already S01, and then it's all the same. Now I'm going to perform these six transactions. I'm going to make a result. So let us go there and then take a copy of it. I will now receive like this. So click on done now. So let us now perform the result on this. <coughs> so go to the home icon and then you go to the supply chain management. And then uh, uh, you go to the, before this, what happens? I will now go and then complete my, uh, what's called my, uh, what's called, if you go there. So I have already created the, what's called uh, the bill on the both the master and child. So let us now go on and get the work definition. I click on it. Work definition, let me go on and create it. I click on it. Go there. So go to the manage work definitions. Manage work definitions. I will now give a plus now. So I'm now going to make a work definition. That's the bill and routing. I'm going to make it now. So it's a G01 underscore F. And then you tab now. So it's a finish good. Underscore F now. You can say that. Underscore F. Finish good now. You tab. So that will be coming. The primary. I go there. Click on it. I will now make it as a main now. I click on next. Go there. Click on plus. So I already have what happens, uh, uh, so many standard operations available here. I will now use the what happens, the cutting operation as the first operation now. And then click on plus now, I will now make the bending and welding. So I have demonstrated this during my order management actually. So bending and welding. And then I click on plus now. I don't know how I'm using it for grinding. So these are three standard operations I'm going to use it now. And then I'm going to associate my items over here actually. So these are three operations, 10, 20, and 30. And click on save and edit now. So I will now click on save and edit. So here I'm now going to create what? The bill and routing. So go down and then see now. So on the first one, I'm now going to have what? The push item now. The serial control item is the push item. On the 10th operation, I'm going to associate it. Now. So I will now see that what's called the serial control item now. The serial control item is the last now. I drag it. Click on it, drag it, and then drop it on the first operation, 10 cutting. So this is having a push type. This is having a push type. And go there, 
So next is what the lot control item. The lot control item will be on the second operation. Fine, drag it down. And remember, this is going to be having an assembly pool as a supply type. So once when you complete operation number twenty, this will not be consumed at all by manufacturing. And then the grading, whatever I'm going to have the revision cut off. Right. Click on it now. So I will now click on the revision cut off. Right. Click on it, drag in property. The revision control is not dropped in. And then all the three dummies, I'm going to put number thirty. Dummies are not having any item items now. No quantity at all. So revision is now on the thirtieth one. And then the dummy lot, fine go there. Dummy lot control, I'm dropping it and putting it now. And then dummy no control, I'm now dragging it and then dropping it now. As and when you drop it, you can now find a tick mark coming up now. Fine, only one item is now remaining that is not assigned to any operations now. So that is the dummy revision control. So click on it, drag it and then do it now. So now you can see the tick mark on all the six now. <coughs> so all my six components are assigned to respective operation section. <coughs> The first one is having a serial control item. The next one is having a lot control item. The third one is having a revision control item, and then the three dummy items, which are not going to have any stock at all, is assigned to the thirtieth operation. Read out some of this now. So the bill and routing are complete now. So click on save and close. By which what happened? The bill and routing is complete. So whenever you complete the bill and routing, it is preferable to what happens? Sign out and sign in. And sign out and sign in. Sign out. And click on confirm, and then there is no sign in now. So by which <coughs> You will be able to come out here. So uh, you, the changes will be basically. Added. Now let us go on the receive it. So for every item, I am going to have two two receipts actually. Fine, two 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 receipts for serial, two for lot, and then two for revision. So go there, take a copy of it, and then go there, click on it. I will now go to the supply chain management, and then go to the inventory management. So supply chain execution, and then go to the inventory management. I am now going to receive these items into my system. <coughs> so click on it. I will now go on and make a miscellaneous receipt now. So click on create miscellaneous receipt. So go there. It's so, a E zero one one one. And then go to have and click on OK now. So it is not done now. Okay, go there. So I am in this organization and then and type is what miscellaneous receipt. Miscellaneous receipt. And then accounting. I will now put one of the accounts over here now. Click on search. So let me put the one thousand one account as an asset item actually, asset account. I will now make this as yes now. So I am going to make six different transactions now. Six lines will be there now. So go there, and then the first line is now coming up now. Take a copy of the line G zero one serial control now. Paste it over here. Give it a tap. So go there. Put it this. Click on it, and then I will now put the sub inventory over here now. It is not G zero one. I think the sub inventories are only yes zero one. I think yes. It is not. So change to yes zero one. Abilities are not changed actually. Save it now. So S zero one stage one is a one. There is a locator control sub inventory number. Find what happens now. And then click on it. And then in which locator I am going to transact thousand three hundred. So I will not take over the locator. I will click on it. And then I will not place the locator over here. Give it a tab. And then click on the edit details. So on this locator I am going to transact two quantities. So the moment I put the quantity, the record lot serial number will be coming. Fine, go there. Click on it. I will look for the quantity first, and then it will be coming. And click on the record lot serial number. So I will now have a single serial number entered over here. Fine, go there. It is 101 and then 104. So I am now putting 101 and then give it a tap. So click on enter serial number again. I will now go for 104 now. 104. So 101 and 104 are entered over here. So they will now reside on what? On this particular 300. Three hundred, uh, whatever locator is going to end. So click on OK. So the first one is not a no, click on plus. No. I will again go there. I will go there. Click on it. So the second item is also same thing. Take a copy it and then uh, put on the snow. Paste it over here. Give it a tab now. And then uh, we'll go there. And then uh, take out the supplementary. <clears throat> and then uh, take out the locator. No, find two hundred, two hundred, two hundred. The locator. No, find two hundred. Now put the locator over here. And then you have to click on any details. So again, I am now going to go for two quantities now. Fine, whatever you want, and then this time, whatever I am going to have, what one thousand, one hundred seven, one hundred eight. So here, there is no need to record. You go there, and then put one not seven, and then give a tap. One not eight will be coming automatically, and that's it. So two numbers are wrong. So for a serial control item, first give the quantity, and then the serial number. That is for lot. It is ultra actually. So go there, click on OK now. It is not done. Go there, click on plus now. We'll now go for the one. Now tell me one thing. So when I want to pick, the pick is what. Locator ascending actually. Remember the serial numbers do not have any picking control at all. Remember. Now tell me if I want three uh, finished goods, I need three uh, serial control item also. 
So which which serial numbers will be picked? So for me, as far as locator is concerned, this is having a top priority and this is having a lesser priority. But from serial numbers onwards, is a one not one, one not four, and one not seven has to be done. So tell me, one not one, one not four, one not seven will be picked, or one not seven, one not eight, and one not one will be picked. Anybody? <clears throat> which will be done? Which will be honored now? The picking rule is going to honor what? Lot seven will be locator. Which are the numbers which will be picked now? I I am going to manufacture three quantities now. For which out of four, one will be left behind. The remaining three will be selected now, and which will be left behind actually? <clears throat> Anybody? Uh, mm, I think by the uh, the 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 ascending order of that number. Yeah, tell me. I don't want any theory. I want the actual numbers now. Which I numbers? One not one. Huh? One not one, Nana. The three numbers I want. One zero one, one zero four, one zero four. One zero one, one zero four, one zero seven is wrong. Oh, somebody is speaking. I am unable to hear it. Please keep your mics working very properly. And if you have a broadband problem, we will not be able to listen to you at all. You have a broadband. I am not able to. One zero four, one zero seven, and one zero eight. Nana, one zero four, one zero seven, one zero four, one zero seven, and one zero eight. It is wrong. It is not totally wrong, but something one of them is wrong actually. One zero seven, one zero eight, and one zero one. Nana, exactly. Fantastic. He is very correct. Who is this? Lokesh. Lokesh is very correct because two hundred has got the top priority. That is the least number now. Fine, it will now pick up both the numbers now, and then afterwards it will now go here, and then here there is no such thing. And then if no other thing is coming, then what happens? The uh, uh, the absolute loss in first order, the first number and the next number. So one not seven, one not eight, and then one not one will be picked. Got it now? Fine. Yes. So now we will now go to the lot now. So even though they are coming in ascending order, but this is having a priority because the locator ascending is the priority three. We don't have any serial number at all in the priorities. Good. So I'll not go there. So any doubt, any doubts? Talk to location and get his clarification. Now, fine. I'll not go for the next one. So lot control. Tab it. And then you go there. And then I will not put the sub inventory over here now. Click on it. I will not place the sub inventory over here. Now, fine. Tab. And then here, go to the locator now. Click on it. Locator. So it's two hundred now. Two hundred. I'm giving it now. Please click over here. Click on it. And then here, I cannot give a quantity at all. So in serial control, we give the quantity and then they give serial number. Here it is not so. If you give it, it will now vanish. No see. I'm not giving two. No fine. Click on the edit control. Edit details. Click on the edit details. And then here you want to see. Go and then give the lot number first of all. So I will now say lot is one not one thousand one now. Fine. One thousand one. And then it is going to expire on what twenty sixth of April. Click on it. I will now give the date as what twenty sixth of April. So twenty sixth of April. So the moment I give the lot number, the quantity vanishes. Actually, we have to give a quantity. So for lot. The entry is like this: one. first lot number and expiration, and then quantity. For serial numbers, first quantity and then the serial numbers. That way I do it. So click on it, okay? Click on it. So the reverse now fine. Click on it. And then click on plus now fine. We go for the fourth transaction on this now fine. There are six miscellaneous results we are going to make now fine. Click on it. So I'm going to go to the fourth one. So take it off it and then go there. So go to this sub inventory fine. Go there. Click on it. So take a copy of this now fine. Go there. Click on it and then paste it over here now fine. Go there. And then the locator. And go there. So the three hundred now. Take a bit, and then I put on this number. And then click on the. And I'm not giving any quantity. Oh, you know, click on the details. So here I'm not going to have what the transaction quantity. I'm not entering it. I'm not going to enter the lot number. The lot number is what one thousand two is expiring on twenty third itself. Tomorrow it is expiring. So the expiration is tomorrow. <clears throat> That's it. Now you put the quantity over. Here. Now apart from Lokesh. Anybody can tell me which which lots will be picked <clears throat> on which how much quantity? Not location, others. No. I am not going to have issue three three quantities of this lot actually because I am going to manufacture three FGs now. So which which lot? Other which is how much? Priority quantity? one is the lot. So first huh? the lot lot sequence will be honored. So the expiring first. See, two hundred is a top priority. Three hundred is a lesser priority. Will it no, honor this or will it honor the expiry date? No, no, no. So in the top line, you say you have the set up priority one for lot. Exactly. Oh. Sanjay is very, very correct. The priority one is a lot first expiry, hmm. whereas the locator ascending is coming as a third priority, and so it will now allocate for one thousand two both the quantities, and then one thousand one one quantity. One quantity. Got it. Everybody, anybody has got it out now. So the priority one is for first expiry first out. So it will now see which is expiring first. That will be allocated first. 
because the locator ascending is coming as a third priority <coughs> it will not allocate this as a first one <coughs> it will not allocate only this 1002 based upon the expiry so 1002 two quantities will be allocated and 1001 one quantity will be allocated anybody has got it out good everybody has understood it you will not go for the final one revision control so click on it i will not go to the add now i will not add the revision control any doubts then and there you have to simulate a lot only some small simulation i have made now fine you may have to make so many simulations now only when your concept is clear then only you can make it now so for serial number you have to enter what the sub inventory and then the locator and then the quantity under the serial number whereas lot sub inventory locator then lot number and then quantity and for serial division number we cannot enter anything at all all these things we cannot enter anything at all Regular revision number. The sub inventory cannot be entered. Locator cannot be entered. Quantity cannot be entered. The first entry is revision number. Only after you enter the revision number, we can enter the sub inventory and then the locator and the quantity. So go there. Click on edit details. So first, what happens? You go there and then do it. So here, what happens? I'm going to hover A2, two quantities. So I'll now drop it down and then make it as A2. Then the sub inventory will be visible for you. So go there. So take a copy of the sub inventory. <coughs> so revision is like this one. You have to enter this one. I'm going to tap now. And then go there, and then take a copy of the locator now. This place, locator and place will be covered. Right? And then here, I go there. So here, after doing this now, fine. The revision, the sub inventory and locator. Now we can go for the transaction quantity. Two quantity. So on A2, I'm going to have two quantities now. On A2, I'll have two quantities. So click on OK now, and you now go for the final transaction of this now. Fine. Click on plus now, and now go to the final transaction. Now go there. So click on it. So take a copy of it and then go there, <clears throat> and then paste this item over here. And the revision control, nothing can be entered on this line at all. Fine. So click on the edit edit details and then go there. It is now A3 now. Fine. A3 is the revision. Go there. Go there. So A3 is the revision. No. Put the sub inventory over here. Now take a copy of it and then put the sub inventory now. <clears throat> then then the locator. Go there. Take a copy of the locator. So locator is what three thousand. And then I will now go for two quantities. So you need to measure what is okay. So give a tab and then give a tap. The quantity will be coming. Transaction quantity only upon tabbing and all. So on A3 two quantities. So on A3 two quantities. And that one. There is no lot and serial numbers. Now again my question. Fine. Both Sanjay and the Lokesh should not answer now. So here 200 is my top priority. The 300 is a lesser priority. So for three quantities, will it take two quantities on A2 and then one quantity on A3 or what? You just see that uh, picking rule. Now. Will it honor my locator ascending or not? Is my question now. Anybody? <clears throat> oh, okay. Location Sanjay can answer. The A two one, Nana. Huh? A three two and the A two one. Very good, fantastic. Even though it is having a lesser priority, the locator ascending is coming as a priority three. So priority two is revision descending, and so what happens? It will now allocate two quantities on A three. And then one quantity on A two. Any doubts? Good. You have understood the picking rule now. Fine. You have to simulate a lot on this picking rule actually. Fine. So many things you have to simulate and then make an exercise now. Fine. Whether you want it, I will now click on submit. Fine. All the six transactions are now simulated. I click on submit now. So I am now submitting this for this one exercise now. Fine. Click on it. And whenever you make any major work now, fine. Whether it is not done, then go to click on it. It is not done. Fine. Basically. You log out and log in so that the system can sense everything. Okay, so if you go to the supply chain management and then go to the inventory management, go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management. So in the inventory, you can now see there are eight picks which are already confirmed actually for the previous exercise I have done. Here. Six plus two. Here also I am going to make six plus two now. So it is already confirmed. So let me go and then create a work order. And everything is now simulated. I am going to that. Let us now go and then create a work order. So we are going to get a work order. <clears throat> right. So I'll now go to the home and then we'll now create a work order on this. One. So I'll now go to the supply chain execution and go to the work execution. Now. So through the work definition, I created the bill and routing, and then through work order, I'm going to get a work order. Any doubts? Go there. So click on the manage work orders and I'm going to get a work order. So click on plus now. I'm now going to populate my item over there. Find the thing on it. It's a G zero one underscore F. Give it a name. Three quantities I'm going to manufacture. Now. So quantity is three. Let me click on that now. And then click on save and edit. So I'm going to save and edit. So once when the work order is created, we can see the completion sub inventory on the main page itself. <clears throat> go down in the completion information. Whatever we go there, 
you go down. So the, the system is now picking up from the plan parameters now. But tell me, can I transact on this 22? The finish good? It cannot be. It can because the item is already tied to 222 and not 22. So the system populates, but while doing the move transaction, it will fail actually. I'm going to show it to you. And then go to the operations now. I click on the operations, there are three operations now. So the first operation is basically serial order one. I click on the item now. So click on the item underscore. And then have a look at it now. So here <clears throat> it's a push type, and then it will be bringing it to the staging now. From stage one to staging, it is going to bring in now. I'm yet to learn this, uh, uh, what's called the lead time management. Once when I enter what I'll be showing you, I'll show you all this thing. So click on the next one now. Fine. The second body is the operation point. Click on item now. There is a push now. Fine. That will be pushed before the transaction starts actually. Fine. Click on item now. <coughs> second one is <coughs> an assembly pool. If you want to override, we can very well override on the work order actually. On the item, it has now brought in now. Fine. It is now going to bring it to the stage. And then go to the third. It has got four items, one revision and then three dummy actually. Fine. Click on the item now. In the item, what happens? Go there and see. So. So all of them are going to bring it to the ring. Everything is operation problem. All the three items are not having any quantity at all, but lot is going to fail now. Lot needs a quantity. Whereas dummy no control and dummy revision control uh, need not have the have a quantity at all. That will pass. But there is this will not fail actually. So we can cancel now. Fine. So everything is now uh, examined over here. You can even see in the history and then all the history of transactions. You can have a look at it now. And go to the good order information. Let me release the order. Now. So go there, click on it. I'm going to release the order. You click on release order. And then click on save and close. So my order number is 1008. It is now released. Fine, click on save and close. Now I'm going to launch my pick. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Did you change the date? <clears throat> not necessary because I, I'm not uh, looking at the lead time management at all. I need to learn it now. So date and all, uh, only when I learn the lead time management, I can simulate those. Can you check if it allows to give you a historical date when you are releasing? Because that is what happens in reality. Oh, what will happen now? Yeah. If I give a date nobody, of yesterday, you're saying no? nobody creates the uh, work order uh, at the time they are doing it in the shop floor. Uh -huh. so, they always, so they will always give a historical date, right? Okay, oh, okay, okay. I don't know about that. Okay, I'm unable to comment uh -huh. on it now. <laughs> you cannot work into the system when so, you are really working no, into the shop floor. History is not a historical date. It is not a history of transactions actually. It will not tell you what are the transactions which has happened on the particular work order. That is only for history of transactions. Now select it and then I'm not going to release it now. No, so pick release. Created, uh, we have created the miscellaneous receipt for two quantity only, right? But the work order is three quantity. Yeah, that's one. See, serial numbers two, two, totally four. And then for lot two plus two is four. And then for revision two plus two, four. Yeah. And the work order is of three now. Remember? Got it? Yeah, got it. Fine. We have got four, four quantities on all the things. Fine. Serial control has got four quantities, lot four, and then revision four. I'm now making work order for three only. And now the horn, it will be honored and then we'll be picked as such. Fine. We already discussed on the picking. So no need to discuss further. No, fine. Well, fine. So here we go there, click on the release and pick. Now. So the moment request pick slip report will be created on this one. I click on it. So I'm now selecting the line 1008 and then click on the release and pick. Now. I'm going to release it. And then I will put the appropriate grouping rule and then print the pick slips. Fine. This is not required. So leave alone other, other things and then click on OK. And by which what happens? So the moment the request pixel will be created, right click and then duplicate and then we will have a look at the pixel. <clears throat> so here I go there and then go to the tools and then I go to the schedule to process and then print the pay, pay, moment request pixel. So click on it. So the pick, pick material worker is now running now. I'm not able to get the pick. Uh, what happens? Uh, the material worker is now coming. Resource worker is not running at all. I don't know whether it is because my license is not there or what exactly it is. I may be missing or something. My resource is not coming. The transaction or resource worker is not running at all. I don't know why it's so. So, on which event uh, these programs are spawned uh, at the time of release or uh... when I clicked on this release and pick material, they are they are getting run. Okay. They click on the release and pick materials. They are running. So click on it. So it's not running. <coughs> so I will now see pinned movement request pick slip report is now printed, succeeded. We'll now go there and then have a look at it. So print movement request. Click on republish now. So click on it. Go to the export. No, no, no. I have a small doubt. I think uh, do we have to assign resource to any you know work definition so that it's already it's assigned. Well. No? I'll not show you. Well, it's already assigned. Well, let me come to that now. Uh, Avi, no? fine. Uh, welcome, Avi. Fine. Uh, go there. I will know first of all uh, doing. I will not show you, but you tell me about where exactly I make a mistake. I'm unable to understand. 
So the moment request quick sweep report, I'm going to click on it. So now you can see on the first one, when the moment request number now, and then the open picks actually fine. It is now picked up from 202 quantities. Fine. It is not mentioning the serial number anywhere. I don't know why it's so. Serial numbers are not mentioned. You are able to see the serial numbers now. So if you go on the series now, so if you now have a look at it. So here for the serial number, for 200, it has to pick up two quantities of 1,108. And then for 300, it has to pick only 101. So it is not showing you. So on this one, 200, it has now picked up what happens, the two quantities. And then on the 300, it has picked up one quantity. It's not showing you, but serial numbers is not showing you. So the first two lines are very proper. We'll now come to the next two lines. On the lot, if you see what happens, on the 1002, two quantities has to be picked up. On the 1001, one quantity. I go that click on it now. You know how it looks. <coughs> so here you go there on the lot control. So on the lot, we are able to see the lot now. My lot number is mentioned over here now. So 1001 is only one quantity over here now. And then on the 1002, we have two quantities. Lot is not showing you, but serial is not showing me. Revision is also showing, but serial is not showing me. I don't know why it's <coughs> But this entire pixel report can be customized by the technical labs. <coughs> technical will be customizing it, and then it will be making in a very appropriate manner the way in which they want, actually. <coughs> so go that you want So you can now see this one. And then we'll now see the revision now. So 1002 lot, it has got two quantities on. That is what we need now. 1002 lot. We want to want because they are expiring very fast. So based upon the lot first expiry, first out, these two quantities are allotted. And then for 1001, it has allocated only one. Any doubts? So on the 1001 lot, it has allocated only one quantity. So there's no coming. So finally, we'll now go on and see the revision now. So revision, what happens? The latest revision, descending. Revision descending is the one top priority. So uh, locator ascending is the next one. So revision is the top priority. So A3 first and then A2 next one, and not this way. So A3 two quantities and then A2 one quantity. You go there and then how now? Go there. So on A3, we can see two quantities, and then on A2, we can see one quantity. Is it clear? Any doubt on the allocation? Allocation is a powerful feature of the movement request now. Fine. It is preferable to use it for all the items. Fine. Normally, what happens, it is recommended to use only for the push components, but for the pull components, also if you use it, instead of manually doing it, we can automatically allocate it. Automatic allocation can also be overridden. Actually, we can also override. Good then fine. So this is what is you go there and then have a look at the movement request. Now have a look at the movement request. For the new quantities, if you go on and have a look at the movement request. For the new quantities, if you go on and have a look at it. <clears throat> go to this place now. For the new quantities, I go there. I will now go to the home icon. I will now go to the inventory management. Avinandan, you are there, na? You just joined, isn't it? You join later or what? Click on the inventory management and go there. And then here I go there, go to this place. I will now go to what? Manage movement request. Now. I will now query the movement request now. My organization is what? A0111. And then click on OK now. <clears throat> so here I will now put the movement request and then query it. I will now better query for the item actually. My G01 underscore. And yet I will now query for the one. So movement request number now. So click on search. So if you go on and open the movement request now, find n one zero one one. You can see. So the serial control is pre-approved. The lot control is also pre-approved. The revision control is pre-approved. The three dummies are closed actually because we don't have any material. So movement request cannot drive the inventory negatively. So if you go on and have a look at this sheet now, go down, page down, page down. So look at this one. So the moment across the line status for the three dummy items would have been got closed as there is no material at all in the supplementary. This indicates that moment request cannot drive the inventory negative. Actually. So moment request is for two types of customers. One is the internal customer actually. So one is the inventory replenishments. So there is a driven by inventory. And then the work order given by the manufacturing is about what happens the material peak actually. And then next one is what? The, uh, the transfer orders. So these are the three types of internal automatic moment request actually. And then for the external customers, one is the sales order peak wave. So the fourth one. So for any of the four, they are meeting either the internal customers or the external customers. And so inventory cannot be driven negative. It will not drive the inventory negative as customers are involved. Whereas miscellaneous issues, sub inventory transfers, and then counting adjustments can even interop transfers also. I'm not running interop transfers. So interop transfers, your miscellaneous issues, sub inventory transfers can very well drive the inventory negative. Actually. Inventory, interop transfers I have done. 
clear on the moment request now? So the three dummies have been closed. Go home and see. The three dummies have been closed because there is no medical at all. So only three lines are eligible for operation. Actually. Good. Now we are now going to perform what the pick. Now you are going to pay this is a pick confirmation. Actually. So previously we have eight confirmed picks. Now now there are total fourteen. Now so eight is for the previous exercise I have done. Now it is six plus two. Now what happens? Another six has come. This is open pick. Now. So these are all six open picks, and then eight is a confirmed one. Eight for the previous one, the T zero one I have already done. So we will now go there and then click on. We are going to pick confirm it. Now. So click on it. So we are going to pick confirm. You can even use this one now. So for this one, if you go there. So we can even use the other one now. Thank you very much. You can even see the pick slip report from here on. Very good. Here you can see the pick slip report. Pick slip number is five eight zero one two. We can also pick up on the bit, or otherwise in the main area we can do it. Close this place. In the whole area, when you click on the open area, the pick number will be coming automatically. If you click on it, so six are open now. Here I have an issue. I would like to say what exactly it is. <clears throat> Suppose that I will now open up five eight zero one two. If you do it on well, the first two items, what happens? It says that the serial numbers are not allocated. A lot of serial numbers are required actually. In this place, it is asking you to do it. I don't know why. The moment request has already allocated here. Only thing is there also on the report the numbers are not coming. Here also the numbers are not coming. But it has allocated for the particular on the 200, which is having higher priority two quantities, on the 300 one quantity. But which number? Why it is not allocating anybody? So yeah. This I have a doubt. I don't know why it's so. Whereas for lot, both the lots are coming, and then for the revision, okay, fine. It is not showing me revision, you know, but that will be coming over there because revision is not a what's called a, the constituent of a picking actually, fine. So revision is not coming. This is not coming. So let me select all, and then what I do is I will not select these things. Let me confirm only the remaining four. So let me confirm the remaining four, no fine, because I don't need any entry on this, no fine. The system is already allocated. Even on the moment request pick slip report, I am not getting the serial numbers over there. And here also on the transaction on the confirming page also is not coming anybody. And please comment what what is the mistake I am making it? Because somewhere some mistakes are making. That is why the serial numbers are not allocated in the MR. Probably it is a bug. We have to raise an issue. <laughs> so what Sanjay is saying is that it is a bug actually. Fine. You should have allocated on the MR itself. And once when you do the pick, it has to be allocated. It may be a bug also. I'm not very sure about it. We make an analysis, and then if I make any mistake, please uh, tell me. So out of six, I'm now confirming four now. I drop it down, and then confirm and close. I click on confirm and close. You can now see that four are going to be confirmed actually. Four of them will be moving to staging now. Fine. Source submittal is stage one, and then it will be moving to stage actually. Stage is a supply submittal. So they will be moving to stage actually. So two is now left, four is confirmed now. I will again open and then I will now give the numbers. So select both actually. On two hundred, you have one to one hundred and seven and one hundred and eight, and go there, drop it down, and then I can even put one out seven over here now. And one out seven, then you tap, you will be getting one out eight. Here we go there, and then the system has to allocate it one out one five. Drop it down and then make a search now. We can even override the allocation system's allocation actually. The inventory in charge can very well override now. Thank you, Mr. Monet. So click on OK. So we're doing. So go there. Select both, and then I will again confirm it. I click on it. I will go to the confirm and close. So click on confirm and close. By which what happens? This is also confirmed. And now all the things are confirmed, and then the line will vanish. Now. So the line will vanish. Now. Like everything is now confirmed. This will be issued to what happens? Your shop flow directly. The line has vanished. Let us now go on and have a look at the stock now. And we'll click on it. So we'll now go to the inventory. So go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory. We will now look at the stock of these items. Right, click on it. We we'll go to the item. Man, the item count is. So the first item I'm going to choose it. I will now choose the first item. <clears throat> I will now have a look at the stock. So three quantities are issued to shop floor now. <clears throat> so it will now decrement because it's a push operation. So the items are issued to supply. It will not be four anymore. It will be only one now. Only one is available. Expand it. I'm going to expand it. I'm going to expand it. I'm going to see. In staging, in this locator, we have one now. Fine. It doesn't go to staging supply sub inventory at all, <coughs> because since the supply type is push, it gets 
upon movement request confirmation of pick slips it gets issued into manufacturing accurate directly so we have got only one in the stage one the remaining three are issued into shop floor into vip they are in vip now we'll go to the second item and then have a look at it second item second item is not issued to vip at all because the supply type is assembly pool actually not to go away and go there and then put this over here and then give a tab now and then click on search now find lot control you can see four are available all the four are available in our stock only it has not gone to vip at all and it expand it expand it so on stage 1 you got only one quantity on this locator actually and then on the staging we have got four happens on 1002 lot we have got two quantities and then on 1000 we have got one quantity so these are ready for supply to the manufacturing now they have been moved from our staging sub inventory into our supply sub inventory now rather from our normal sub inventories it may be available on multiple things also stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 etc and then from that it comes into the supply sub inventory of staging clear on this now anybody has got any doubts 1002 why 1002 means because it is going to expire first so that has been picked both the quantities have been picked first and then this is going to expire later so let's not not on the numbers basically not on the scores and numbers so we'll not go on the how about the third item now find the third thing of it go to third item expand it and search click on it so click on search <clears throat> so all the four are available again you can now see on the revision 2 on the organization and then you can now see the sub inventory staging is there now and one quantity is there and the other and then if you expand it <coughs> sub inventory stage 1 i'm expanding it now so it is on the locator and then here staging do not have any locator at all so a2 is available a2 on the staging we have one quantity and then a2 revision on the 200 200 quantity i have got one quantity whereas in the revision 3 if you go on and see both of them are picked because it's the latest revision so the revision 3 do not have any stock on the staging one stage one at all both of them are available on the staging three. clear on this now fine so they have been brought to the supply sub inventory the supply sub inventory is staging now fine they've been brought any doubts shall i perform the move now now we shall be asked now when i start to move what happens you will not be able to see this now right click and then duplicate now now i am going to move make a performance i am now going to move the assembly in the shop floor now so go to the supply chain execution and then i go there i will now go to the work execution and then i will now move the assembly in the shop floor and take on it i'll now go to the review dispatch list so till now i was now doing on the manage work orders and i was doing the release and pick it is all completed fine i have done the pick for both push as well as pull components also fine that is preferable because if you do a pull manually if you don't allocate it and then do it manually you may land up in a mistake because you may not be able to honor the company's picking philosophy so it is preferable to create a movement request and then do it but it all depends upon the field fine the field engineers say that no 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 movement request is required then you remove the tick mark from the organization parameter so click on it and then here go there i will now go to the review dispatch list now and then let me query the work call number 1008 1008 i'm querying it click on search so it's not coming So expand it. I am now going to perform the first operation. Now tell me in the first operation what material I have to issue to the manufacturing. Anybody? In the operation number ten, which material I have to issue to manufacturing now? Doing the move transaction. Anybody? Which item I have to issue? Anybody there? How many are there in the participants? Who got many are there? Nobody is having an answer. No. 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 Okay. Okay. Repeat the question again. Uh, which material I have to issue on the first move transaction on the tenth move, move tenth operation on the completion it is what I have to issue as per the definition so these two are push they are already issued these two are assembly pull they are needed only on operation twenty these three are pull operation pull they are needed only on operation twenty on operation twenty so these already are issued now through the push. The quantity has also come down in our stay in our staging sub inventory also. It doesn't go to staging at all, and the stage one it has already come down. So if you go and then do the quick complete details, there is no item to be issued at all for operation ten. Okay, okay, you are just uh, formalizing the transaction. That's all. Exactly, exactly. So here my resource transaction is not coming. I don't know why. I missed so. something. I missed something. Sorry for uh, yeah, not, me, uh, missing something. so i missed that point that move look movement request was automatically generated by your uh, work orders or yeah. you have no when i clicked on this now 
Fine. When they click on this one, I don't know. Okay, I will go there. Right? Please. No. When they click on this, let me go there. Go to the supply chain execution and then go to the work execution. Now, mm -hmm. I click on it. And then if you go to the manage work orders, manage work orders. Then they click on the release and pick the movement request. Movement request has got there. So okay, at that point of time, the movement movement request is created. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So here there is nothing to issue on 10 now, but my resource transaction is not coming because I don't have a license or I'm not missing any role or not. This is where I'm not stuck actually. My resource transactions are not coming. Here. So save and close, the 10th operation is now getting completed. Nothing to issue at all. Thank you, save and close. So operation number 10 will be completed. So it says you have completed quantity number three for operation number 10 of the work order number so and so. The next operation is operation 20. So 20 is now ready now. It expanded. Now tell me on 20th. Which component I have to issue now? This is a push. This is an assembly pull. This is an operation pull. Now tell me, does a lot control item has to be issued to manufacturing or not? That is my question. The lot controlled one is uh, assembly pull, so it will be no. backlash. It will be backlash. No. When I perform operation twenty, it will not be backflushed at all. Only when I perform the final operation, it will be backflushed. Got it now, fine. So no material requirement for operation 20 at all because it is assembly pull. So since it's assembly pull, I go there, click on complete release. There will not be any activity at all. I go there, click on save and close. That's it. No mistake. So I have now completed operation number 20. We'll now go on and check our stock of the lot control. So operation number 20 for 1008 has been completed. The next operation is 30 now. I go there. You go to the manage item quantities and then query for this lot control item. So go there. So let me go there. G01 underscore lot. And you have now. So let me go read my table search here. All the four quantities will be available on my staging sub inventory only. The three quantities are available there. It is not issued to VIP at all because it is having an assembly pull. But upon 30th operation, this will be issued to manufacture. Is it clear now? Only upon 30th operation because it is an assembly pull now. Lot is having an assembly pull as a supply type. So it will not be issued now. So only when you, what happens? There? Complete your manufacturing, then only this item will be issued to manufacturing. Till now, it will be in our normal inventory stock. Now, the fourth operation has got multiple things: the revision and then the three dummy items also. The revision control item and then the three dummy items. Right. So, revision control do not need a stock at all. System you can very well issue to manufacturing. Right. The inventory will be driven negative, whereas for a lot, the inventory cannot be driven negative at all. The lot inventory cannot be driven negative. It will not throw an error on this one. Fine. Out of these four items, fine, we have to now issue on the 30th one. Fine. Now, 30th one, both the lot, lot revision, and then what happens? You have three dummies basically. You have to issue it. You'll now see what how it's functioning. So you go there, go and space review, and then expand it, and then we'll now perform a completion. Fine. Click on completion. On the 30th operation, I'm going to complete fine. Complete with details now. Now we have a backflush coming as a second part now. Here only it is going to be backflush. So click on next now. You can go there and we'll see this. In this place, the lot control item, the lot is allocated because we have it in the what's called in your staging sub inventory. And then on next one also, the, this is available on the 1002 lot number. We have got two quantities. 1001 is one quantity. So you cannot modify this because it is already allocated by your movement request actually. So the staging area is the intermediate one. These three things, if you see, find the revision control. Find that you want it. So revision control, and then the dummy ones need not have to have any material at all. So the tick mark is coming. That is on this dummy lot control. The tick mark is not coming. If you go down and drop it, there is no material at all. You click on search, you won't find any material at all. So we have to have material for the lot control and serial control. Whereas revision and dummy revision and then uh, uh, revision control and then dummy revision control need not have to have any quantities at all. Is it clear now? So now we have to have this item in our staging area. Clear? Anybody has got any doubts now? It's a very complex topic, but if you understood it, it will be great actually. And then you can now see what happens. It is not the staging sub inventory or not. Because it already reached the staging and so it's not coming. So let us go there and then keep the dummy lot control on this place. So I will now go to this home account. You again and again watch this. Then only you can understand it. Now. So again and again, run it and watch it. I made only a simple simulation. That itself, you can see how difficult it is. So click on. Now we have got 14 confirmed actually. <clears throat> so click on create miscellaneous transaction. And then here, I'm now going to simulate again. The two dummy lots actually. Miscellaneous result. Click on it. 
So click on search. I want you the one thousand one number. Make it a real Okay. So if the G01 underscore dummy, there are three dummies available now. I will choose the log dummy. Sub inventory is what? The sub inventory over here. So, paging area. So, I have already completed what the transactions are 1001 and 1002. I will now make 1003 and 1004. So, I'm going to make 1003. So, the locator I have to specify. I will give one 200. So, go there. So, there is no revision at all. Find locator. I'm going to do it. Ah, it has got hang. The screen is hanging. Ah. So close it and then again open up another page now. Directly to the so duplicate. So I go to the supply chain management, and then go to the inventory management, and then here I go there, click on it, and then click on create miscellaneous transaction. Drop it down. And then I will now go to the miscellaneous receipt now. Click on it. Go there. And then click on search now. So 1001, I'm going to click on OK now. <coughs> and move yes now. So click on plus now. <coughs> it is G01 plus to dummy, dummy lot control. I'm going to put it now. Lot control. Go there. And then I take it out of the staging sublimatory. So go to the edit details of my locator. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to store it on the list to give it a tab now. Now I'm going to give 1003 as a lot number. Lot number is 1003. And remember, it is not having any shelf life, and so no expiry date will be coming. On 200, I'm transacting it now. On 200, I'm now making what this is 1003. What is that? This is 1003. This is a dummy lot control field, 1004. Not to go to save now. These are our dummy numbers. On 200, uh, 1003, and then on 300, 1004. So, Lord, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to give you okay. I'm now going to ask you a question. Be ready now. Click on plus now. I will put again G01 dummy, <coughs> dummy lot control. Go there. So, the stadium over here now. So click on any else. Now I'm now going to go for 1004. And locator has not come. I don't get so. The locator I'm going to give you now. So lot is 1004. This is what you So I'm now simulating exactly 1003 on 200 to 1 days, 1004 on 300 to 1 days. Click on it. I will click on OK. Oh, God. This is now getting locked actually. I don't know. It's so. Uh, screen is getting locked actually. Maybe one by one I will not do it now. I don't know why the screen has got locked. Ha! Ah. So, okay. One by one I will not do it. It's not coming up on the top again. I'm going to give a cancel now. Fine, let me log out and log in now. I'm going to cancel this operation, 30th operation. I'm canceling it. And then let me log out and log in now. And then again, come in now. Sign out and sign in. <clears throat> are you all listening? Are you understanding it? Anybody? <clears throat> Supply chain execution. I'm going to go to the inventory management. Oh, God, nobody is speaking. <laughs> it's such yes, my man. We are here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I will now make what miscellaneous result. So one thousand one and one click on clear. So in the dummy lock control plus G zero one. Oh, 
go there. So take the staging subject of the Let's put it over here. So click on everything. So I wrote it. Locate number as 1000. Let me complete this transaction. So 302 quantities now. Of 302 quantities of what? 1003. 1003 means what? It is on 200 actually. Fine. I made a mistake there. I will not put the appropriate locator now. 1003 on 200 actually. So 200, uh, 1003 on 200 now. Click on OK. And then click on submit. This transaction is now completed. I will make one more transaction because when I make double, it is now giving some problem now. One by one, I'm making it. So I'm going to drop it down. I will choose what? Miscellaneous result. Account. No space. I'm making this account. I click on click. So it's a G01 underscore dummy. Dummy log card. So go there on this one. Let me submit it. Then do the locator. Take code and then do the locator. So click code edit now. So it is 1004. 1004 on 300, two ones. 1004 on three, and on 300. So click on OK. So we have simulated these two transactions now. Now my question is to you now. So we have got 1003 on 200, and then 1004 on 300. Previously, we did what? It allocated two quantities on 1002, and then one quantity on 1001. Now tell me. How the allocation will be there for 1003 and 1004? Anybody? Previously, two quantities on 1002 was allocated, then one quantity on 1001. Now, how it will allocate for the dummy? For the dummy lot control, how it is going to allocate? Anybody? Which lot number will be allocated? What? You have changed the, uh, the, the rule, right? No, nothing has been changed. This rule is written only for what happens. The rule is same now. Not first expiry, first open. Mm. Rule is not changed. At all. <coughs> now tell me. Okay, so, 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 serial is not inside the rule. So serial is no, no. I'm only talking about these two lots only. These two lots only I'm talking about. 1003 and 1004 only. So, how many quantities of 1003 and then 1004 will be allocated by the moment request now? So, as per the expiry. Uh, Mm. It is the, uh, the 1004 is fast, then no. 1000. You're wrong here. One you're one. wrong. Tell me one. why you're wrong now. It will lock it 1003 to one days and then 1004. One why? Is, yeah. why? Why? Because we don't have the expiry. Exactly. Yeah. The dummy is not having any expiry at all. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. So the dummy is not having any expiry. And so what happens? 1003 based upon this number now. Right? Now, lot doesn't come into picture. The locator ascending comes into picture. Got it now? So because of which 1003 two quantities will be allocated and then 1004 one quantity. Got it? I'm going on. So now let me create the moment request box. So already 14 are there now. My 14 are confirmed. We'll now create two more lines for the moment request actually. So go there. You go to the home icon. And then here I go there. Go to the supply chain execution and then go to the work execution now. And here I go to the work order and then go there. Click on the manage work orders. And then here I'm going to allocate it. 1008 is my work order number now. And click on search. Now I will again create it. In reality, what happens? We'll be having the dummy lot control stock also. But since for, for the practice purposes, we are now doing it separately. Select it and then click on the release and pick. The moment request will be created for these two dummy lots actually. <coughs> so right click and then duplicate now. So 1003 two quantities and then 1004 one quantity will be allocated actually. So go there, go to the tools and then have a look at the scheduled process. And then print the pink slip moment request report. The moment request pink slip report is now going to be printed now. So it is now running, running. Everybody is clear on this now? 
any doubts on this please ask me is a very big process and then a simple simulation that itself is not taking so much of a time you see click on the republish go ahead and then export to pdf now and then save turn it up and then go down and you see so now you can see on this one 1003 has got two quantities and then 1004 has got one quantity because the expiry is not there and so a lot first expiry first out will not fire at all only locator descending will be firing no Lo locator ascending is firing because of which what happens 1003 of what happens the two quantities and then 1004 of one quantity so yes is it clear hello anybody are you clear on this now <laughs> oh god nobody is responding me okay, now sorry nana come again what's your asking 1003 two quantities and then 1004 yeah, one okay. are able you are able to understand okay ma yes 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 nana good good so close it now now let us go and then perform our final 30th operation on this this place we are now going to work execution and then go there go to the dispatch list review the dispatch list the 30th operation i'm going to perform for 1008 so click on search now and then expand it over here i'm not going to complete it as much as now if you go to the next you can now see a tick mark coming up everywhere now i click on next now you will not find a tick mark anywhere oh god it is not coming dummy lot confirm we have to select the lot right component lot number then it will come I, oh no i have no i forgot that i have not done that not done the pick confirmation actually <laughs> so once when i done the pick confirmation this line will be split into two now actually Fine. I have not done the pick confirmation. That is a mistake now. So only the moment request has been created, the pick confirmation has not been done. So six lines will now become seven lines now. Okay, so we cancel now. I have not done the pick confirmation. I have to do the pick confirmation for the remaining two lines. So go there. I go to the inventory management, and then you can now see there are only two open picks now. Fine. There are only two open picks. So remaining fourteen are confirmed. So click on the open picks, and then confirm the picks. Now. Select it, and then you can confirm. Select. It. So only serial numbers are not getting allocated. I don't know why it's so. Whereas the lot and revision are all getting allocated. So select it, and then I'm not selecting both the lines actually. The lot numbers are coming. Fine, one thousand three two numbers, one thousand four. Click on confirm and close. Now, if you go and then do the review dispatch operation, you will be able to see. You go to the work execution now. So go there, click on it, and then click on the review dispatch list. And then one thousand eight is the number. I'm going to click on search. Click on search. I'm going to get my expand. The thirtieth operation ready. If you click on the complete details, go there and then click on the next now. You will now find six has now become seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines. Because the dummy of one thousand three has got two quantities here. The two quantities one thousand four has got one quantity. My record is two. So all the lines are there now. From staging, we can very well do it now. And click on next one. So back flush, we got all the tick marks now because we have done the pick confirmation for this also. And click on next now. We go to the inventory. Inventory means the FG now. So in the FG, we are going to do it. So lot number is required and serial number is required. Select all the lines now. Select it. Select it. Select it. And then in the ORC parameter, we have again given the lot number now. And if you go there and you click on it now, so if you go there, click on it. We go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> and then have a look at the lot and serial numbers which are given at the ORC level actually. Click on search now. So it's manage inventory all. So go to the manage inventory all, <clears throat> and then query for this all. Eight zero one 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 and then get app and then enter in now. Find it out and then edit it. And then go to the next and then here you can go and have a look. So in this place, log serial number zero. So here, so lot underscore all underscore and then it is going to have a fifteen digit with a zero padding now. So if you go there, you click on it, and then so all the three lines are selected. Click on generate lot; it will be generating the lot. So you can see there it is lot underscore org underscore, and then with the zero padding for 15 characters, two zeros have been put. I don't know where from this number is coming. 11,001 is coming. Somebody please tell me. Friend, this start number is not. I'm not able to understand where from that this coming because it is not there in this place at all. We don't have any start number at all in lot. Whereas for the serial number, we have a start number. Lot number. We don't have any start number. From there, it is coming. I don't know. 
serial number is the sl underscore org underscore is at the org level now and 103 is a start button so if you go there click on it so all the lines i'm selecting it now and then click on generate serial number the serial number will be generated 103 103 now if i save and close can i save or not tell me no you cannot save because what? the lo locator is wrong yes exactly sanjay is very correct sanjay from kalpana is very correct because this has been picked by the what's called the plan parameters whereas this item particular item has got a 22 22 22 so the locator is wrong and then if you try to give a save and close it will not throw an error now the locators are wrong so the uh, assignment which are given is now taking a wrong and the value for the locator attribute is wrong actually so it's now giving you an id actually so the locator id is wrong you now go there and then make a change 22 222 i can 222.222 Go the type of take complete and put in every year now. Good. So Sanjay, now you are now more clear upon this now. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So click on save and close. Now it will get inventorized. Now. The FG will be getting inventorized. Save and close. It will be getting inventorized. But I have I have realized one thing uh, after uh, doing something. Mm -hmm. So it is more of practice. If you do not practice, you do not understand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's like you know, medical profession. <laughs> Only learning is not enough. You have to do exactly. <laughs> so it is now done now. And click on done now. We will now go and then see on the inventory stock for the items now. And click on it. So we'll now go to the strategy and execution and go to the inventory management now. And go to this place and then click on manage item quantities now. So if you go there and then see this. Now. So we will now open up the serial item and take of it. So it is already issued. We will now see all the items over there now. So on a push operation, already all the three are issued. We don't have anything wrong. So we have got only one item available on this stage one in the particular three unit. <coughs> we'll now go for the next item. That is on the uh, lot control data. Now it will have been issued now. Previously it was not issued. Now the 30th operation has been completed and then they've been inventorized also. <coughs> oh God. The mission is hanging actually. Yeah, we'll go by this. <clears throat> we'll go to this place. And then we'll go to the supply chain execution. We'll go to the inventory management. We'll go there. Click on it. We'll go to the manager item corner. Yes. Lot control item. We'll go to the search. Now it has been issued. Previously, it was showing four in the staging area. Now nothing will be there in the staging at all. So staging will not be there at all. It will only in the this thing is not there. Now go for the revision control. Take over it and then have it for the revision control. Expand it. Ah, so click on done now. The page is now getting hanged actually. I don't know why it's so. <laughs> so click on done now. I go to the home page and then I go to the inventory management. The manager item it is so here the revision control also will be having only one now. Fine, I'll now go to the dummy lot and then show it to you. Dummy lot, my dummy lot cannot be driven negative, so you'll have dummy one on this now. So, dummy lot cannot be driven negative, whereas the dummy revision control, I will not show it. Will gone driven to minus, it will be driven to minus actually. So, click on search now. The quantity will be minus three actually. So the no control item and then the revision control items need not necessarily have a quantity for a manufacturing operation. So you can even provide the quantities later also. You can very well drive the inventory negative. Whereas for a lot control and serial control, we have to have what quantities. But for a serial control, there is an exception. If you go and click on it, for a serial control, there is an exception. I keep on sorry. So, 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 um, there is an exception. There's no. I keep on it. Manage plant parameters. So in this place, if you go on and see in the second day, in here, we can even allow what happens an item without a serial control at all. Allow negative issue without serial number entry. So there is an exception only for serial numbers in this place for the third time. So you can do it. So without even entering the serial numbers, we can very well what happens uh, issue the item to the manufacturing. Later on, we can record what serial numbers have been issued. So this completes. Yeah, what's called a yeah, big exercise on the push 
operation pull assembly pull for serial lot location locator and then your revision how many of you understood can you put a green tick mark on the participants pain now it's a very tough topic you only have to practice a lot then only what happens you can do it good surya has understood it now lokesh where is the green tick mark in the, in the participants pain you'll be having a green tick mark lokesh what is your uh, this thing now fine you are given a raise hand now you have got lots of doubts i think you know lokesh is raising hand but he still has got some doubts now fine vasudevan has understood it fine good anybody else has fully understood the whole demonstration so i need to go through your uh, first session also okay okay, okay fine yeah <laughs> that's great avinash sanjay das has understood it now fine sandeep hemant shivashankar i think uh, you can open up your mic and then speak now fine it is my time for you yes sir i had refresh after a long time oh 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 so you have to go through this again now and then only can understand yeah i need to practice it now yeah yeah there are two okay. questions uh, two open questions one okay. is whether the incremental backflash has been supported in the fusion okay. that is one question mm. the we have to ask it to the oracle uh, probably if nobody knows then we have to raise an sr i will raise an sr for this mm. and the second question is phantom i phantom think is there phantom is supported here okay. phantom is supported here mm. but uh, i have not i have to simulate everything now i have to first of all learn it and then simulate it so once the learning is learning i will know simulate the phantom also <laughs> multiple product if i have multiple product two three products is hmm. it supported i don't know i have finished good from one job i have two finished good or three hmm. finished good yeah it will support yeah okay next is by product whether the by product has been introduced it is the if you give a negative quantity it is automatically by product if the quantity is negative it will be back flushed into inventory actually it is there your negative quantity is nothing but a by product no by product is a different uh, <laughs> different item altogether okay that item if you put it on the component and then if you say that the quantity is negative it will go back to inventory upon completion of the operation okay so the name is not used but the functionality is there yeah functionality is there actually okay lokesh what is your problem any uh, specific problem or you have to go through this once again what do you feel so location no 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 sorry no no <laughs> i was about to put that green tick mark but anyway <laughs> i raised that okay fine okay, okay. So, understood uh, but but yeah man like you said right uh, i'm aware of the concept but i have to uh, you know have to have it on hands on okay. that gives us more uh, you know more raise just yes, yeah. like the session now yeah yeah very good session rana after a long time i have uh, rest because i was constantly <laughs> working <laughs> not focusing on my uh, development so yeah sure good the next question is whether the yield is supported why are yes, yield yes. the yield as well as uh, the one more thing you know fine one more uh, yield is supported everything is supported it will be supported from planning actually planning will be honoring the yield actually mama efficiency and yield i think both are both are supported that is what i heard but i have not gone through this but both are supported actually yeah nana this is uh, related to picking no basically yeah. Yeah. this activity is yeah this activity is yeah. basically picking how focus is on pick to a push yeah operation pull and then assembly okay. mainly this is uh, for a, a sort of a, a fmcg or like uh, warehousing so any warehouses you will have to pick materials no fine the entire operations will not show you the picking it <clears throat> and uh, how how that uh, the customer demand or something gets related to this uh, customer what the end client is going no, to no, touch the finished good no what item to design. what item to pick it is getting automated yes. based on rules exactly based upon the picking rule it picks up the appropriate serial numbers and lot numbers okay. that is the biggest thing no no we have not provided any casting setup right we are on casting i meant to learn no fine <laughs> once when i learn in the, in the discrete uh, in the discrete the mandatory question the requirement was that your product is integer quantity so uh, now this decimal quantity production hmm. is automatically taken care right you can produce decimal quantity yeah yeah, yeah. we can very well do it in so a fraction you can put a fraction it will definitely take it so we can produce fraction right <coughs> yeah yeah we can very well produce fraction okay
ana in routing uh, you will have timing and capacity other thing yeah, yeah. i'm not sure here uh, it's all there no fine capacity planning is there everything is there but uh, this demonstration this, is this is a basic material basic. push and then pull okay i just this reminds me one uh, one experience mm -hmm. uh, very very uh, you know famous person he knows everything in planning he is very popular uh, for his knowledge in planning mm -hmm. but together we are implementing at that time he will not let me use the unconstrained uh, constraint planning he asked me do not pronounce the word constraint planning <laughs> so in actual implementation people do not uh, want to even explain what is available oh god <laughs> But he is very famous uh, for planning. Mm. So you are no. working along with him for uh, implementing a manufacturing solution. Yes, Lokesh, tell me. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, no I was uh, giving some example based on my experience. Uh -huh. See, when when you say you know when we talk more about something, right? The delivery also become more, you know, and the timeline, uh, whatever is being proposed, will also increase eventually. So that is why people don't open up mostly. they would like to keep it as minimum as so possible and try to explain that if you use constraint planning then there are suppose some feature is there you mm. tell the client and you explain that there is a cost involved your dire delivery will be delayed and that way you can convince that no, okay no 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 see cost is not just the matter right time also is a other factor the okay. time is equals to cost in a business project time is equal to cost So That's if what? I am I if there is a feature I just do not tell this. It's a matter of you know b b b opinion. Most okay, of you 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 I'll ask you one question, right? What what methodology you are following, right? In your implementation. Okay. It depends on we are talking about generality. It's not a no 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 no. I'm not talking about generality. See now uh, we can close now, the recording here, Nana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can close. No, it doesn't matter. You let it get recorded because your thoughts are getting recorded. No, no. My observation in this implementation industry is that most of the <laughs> consultants are not explaining the. I have seen consultant who very highly a partner level person is telling the client do not use the local uh, sub inventory, do not use sub inventory. The logic he tell told me there is a complexity that. in the integration process if there are more uh, supplementary then it will fail there will be more number of records the locus you want to say something yeah yeah give me give me going to you going to retire in another one year that's big personality he gets crores of rupees as salary locus you were saying something tell me tell us no Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, I, I was pulled by my uh, children. Sorry for that. No, no. <laughs> so, uh, no, no, no. See, the reason why uh, most most of the team members do basically, you see, now uh, what we are doing is a uh, agile methodology, right? Based on this agile methodology, uh, uh, everyone wants to take that uh, into multiple phases. Okay, but uh, you know, uh, as as per the uh, cost constraints, uh, uh, as per uh, Lot of deviations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, already, uh, your management might have discussed and come up with a cost, and then if you try to introduce new things, is going to increase time. And, and you cannot bargain saying that you know. Uh, I, I, I have. I Lucas, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, I am a very small person. I am not a very big person. So, anyways, my opinion will not matter. So probably <laughs> no, no, your no. opinion See. will be more valuable in the implementation. I know that. But I'm a very very small person, so my no, opinion. It, it's not about small or big. It's all about how do you understand or how do you make uh, things progress? Because my when, observation when you... is the maximum implementations are failing because we are hiding the features. That's my observation. I have implemented ten to eleven projects. Implementation. No, 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 no. It's it's not about that. Uh, that's why I uh, said I am a small person. I'm not as as big person. That's, that's so my right. opinion is because not we 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 were earlier in the previous stage, right? Uh, we are we are trying to give more to the client. Okay, that is our expectation because we know more features are available, and we are trying to use a model called waterfall model. Okay, and that is why we are trying to fail because uh, uh, when you try to implement more sort of things. Uh, for example simple simple things right uh, in, in some complex scenarios uh, maybe uh, 
maybe i can put it as a category right a category can be defined as a must right must level and the or level now customer wants uh, some features at the org level and if you change to org level even though org level has more features right you cannot use most of the features in the org level okay hmm. that way you can tell them see i have more features oracle has more features but you cannot use it okay so that is why what people are trying to do right now is going with the agile methodology what agile does is keep the basic requirement first try to give it try to fulfill it then you take the complex part okay it's not about we are not meeting the demand of the client it's about a minimum start okay try to do that minimum requirement to the client let them keep that hands on let them give their get that confidence and keep on doing their additional part that is why i think uh, most of the implementation uh, even uh, even when my previous company we have done it we we wanted to have a short timeline but we want to implement more okay and that is that is where it is creating problem and we never know because oracle is not stable any i mean i wouldn't say stable but it's becoming stable in most of the core areas but unfortunately then you in in some cases i have seen one of the implementation you give more and then client says why well, and, and and user says see uh, who, who, i don't have much resource you reduce this you know i don't i, I don't want to do uh, so many transactions right <laughs> so it's something like that, that so is, that is accepted i know that what you are coming to i know that because Uh, give you more, you give more features then they need more people to do those execute those yeah, exactly. i you know that that's a, that's a challenge i know that but on, so what lokesh is saying is that the waterfall method of agile uh, indicates that you do the minimal uh, uh, requirement fulfillment of the customer then gradually it develop so that's a good one actually so that 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 is the method i think uh, you know every company is adopting right now even my our company and we we in my personally and personal experience with with my company they have never failed at all using oh, agile okay. okay so that is because uh, they give a minimum guarantee to the client implement it first and then they take it in the second phase third phase so that way uh, client will have uh, e- e- even if you see in the previous days right for any e- uh, e business uh, implementation it will take years mm. to understand and implement and then get their hands on right but now with this uh, agile you give give them everything uh, in three months let them start using the system and then slowly you gradually increase you know one by one so, so it will go live in about three months time and then after months uh, gradually while doing support you will be implementing more and more features correct so. correct it is it is more kind of an uh, after support enhancement mm. right so they keep on adding things and and also there is also uh, other benefit is you buy out time and second thing is uh, within that three months you will get new features from oracle you can even try that also you know if there is a gap uh, in any kind of a requirement that's so a that also good yeah yeah this that 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 is the this methodology for the first time actually and the waterfall method you're saying no no um, waterfall is the previous one uh, anana now we are going ahead with the agile agile concept oh, oh, oh. waterfall has been superseded with the agile concept <laughs> yeah good nice all of you fine uh, hope that you enjoyed the session and then you got some inputs uh, for uh, where is the section. video where is the video uploaded sir i will be uploading in youtube actually okay and then uh, you will now see that uh, in our uh, whatsapp in the telegram group also. okay thank you sir and that word file uh, can you send the word yeah, file yeah yeah the word file along with it uh, will be available on our on our internal groups okay, okay. in whatsapp in the uh, whatsapp group and in the in the, in the whatsapp group also will post it uh, that uh, the word file but in the telegram in my youtube i will not have only the video okay okay in the whatsapp as well as in the telegram groups i will be pasting the word file also. nice talking to you fine have a good session fine thank you very much Thank you sir thank you nana sir thank you sir